Blocking everything because it's too much of a hassle may infringe on the rights of the recipients of information. The biggest issue is that what shouldn't pass through does. Dayu Nobori is the director of the Cyber Technology Laboratory of the Information Technology Promotion Agency of Japan. He's considered a hacker extraordinaire who has broken through internet blockades by authoritarian states. While at university, he developed a VPN system called SoftEther, which was blocked by China's internet censorship firewall. I want to have a dialogue with the people who block the system, because it's people who are behind it. To have that dialogue, I felt I needed to develop software to circumvent that blockade and unveil that at an academic conference to get them to say something about why the situation is what it is. That's why I decided to do this research. In 2013, he developed VPN Gate to evade online monitoring by China. By routing traffic through volunteer servers around the world, it bypasses the government's internet censorship firewall, allowing users to freely access overseas websites. It's been accessed more than 16 billion times from 237 countries and regions over a 10-year span. It wasn't blocked for about half a year. But then everything was blocked. It was frustrating. It's been made possible because the Chinese government has recruited its own computer-savvy citizens to plug up the firewall in return for allowing them to freely use any resources they have. It's a national policy. I think it's something people would be very happy about. In the past, the U.S. did something similar, and that's why we can now use smartphones, personal computers, and even chips in 4K high-vision cameras. All of that is because the U.S. did the same thing. The most difficult thing for Japan is the problem we face of not having a system of bringing together talented engineers who can quickly develop technologies that are required. It's a very difficult problem. Each company may have maybe one person who has the capability to do this. China, on the other hand, worked out a solution in just half a year. A country shouldn't do things haphazardly. It needs to make maximum efforts and invest sufficiently to get the best researchers to apply their brain power to the fullest extent possible and develop the best solutions. During the pandemic, he rushed to develop a government teleworking system based on VPN gate. This is the first distributed gateway for teleworking. A single gateway can accommodate a thousand and up to three thousand people. This is critical. What if it's unplugged? If unplugged, telework at 800 or so local governments, city offices, and town offices will all come to a halt. It would cause chaos. So please don't touch it. The screen says that there's been a cyber attack. Yes, IPA researches and analyzes cyber attacks. Is that it? Yes, when there's a cyber attack, IPA issues a reception number. What number is this? One billion. The map shows where the attacks originate in real time. When technology develops, there are basically no national borders. So it's especially crucial that exceptionally talented people are solidly linked to and have a healthy relationship with the authorities of a country. What's more, they may be working on the country's great firewall now, but the skills they acquire in doing so may lead to the development of new software or new operating systems or new internet communication technologies. I believe that could become the foundation of next generation computer systems and AI. What we hackers do isn't at all political. We're competing in the development of technology and the growth of engineers who understand the essence of computers and communications will clearly benefit everyone around the world.